Hey guys, it's Miles. So you may or may not have been hearing about this whole Gamergate situation. Some say that it's a response to corruption in gaming journalism, and others will tell you that it's just straight up cyberbullying. And it's super confusing. But one thing is for sure, the internet is in the middle of a huge culture war, and we are about to catch you up on it. So what is Gamergate? Great question. To answer that, we have to go all the way back to August when an angry ex-boyfriend of Zoe Quinn, who's a game developer, made a long blog post accusing her of basically trading sex for good reviews from a game journalist. It's like someone accusing a movie director of sleeping with a film critic just so they can get a good review of their film, which is pretty sketchy. And thus, the Quinspiracy was born. So obviously, once this story got out, it pissed off a lot of gamers about a perceived lack of ethics in gaming journalism. So they took to the internet, tweeting, vlogging, blogging, and they blew the whole thing up. Eventually, actor Adam Baldwin unified this whole thing under a single name when he tweeted a link to one of these vlogs with the hashtag Gamergate. A lot of the anger has been directed towards Quinn, who's not even a journalist, and she's received so many death threats that she actually had to flee her home, and she's not alone. Gators are attacking women who have pointed out misogyny in gaming. Feminist commentator Anita Sarkeesian and game developer Brianna Wu have received over 74,000 tweets since September 1st, and even Felicia Day got doxxed just for saying the words Gamergate. But I'm just a guy with some facts that loves to play Red Dead Redemption. I think we need an expert to enlighten us a little bit, so... And then, Nation, let's talk about the craziness around Gamergate. If you've seen the hashtag trending and you're like, what the hell is this about, or you think it's just one thing, it is a clusterfuck of I don't know. I'm gonna try and vaguely, broadly sum this thing up without throwing my personal opinion into it. Reportedly, there are several tiers to Gamergate. The first tier is how it generally started. People were really worried about the corruption of gaming journalists and game developers. Can you really trust video game reviewers and video game journalists and even tubers that do reviews if they're getting sponsor and ad money from those people, they're getting special treatment, they're getting the game early, but they're agreeing not to say anything negative. What I'll tell you is companies trying to do this, that's not new. SourceFed and the PDS were at least blacklisted by one movie company. That's an unfortunate truth. But then after this first year, we had a second group that thought that, you know, people were trading sex for good coverage. The reason that came about was from a blog post from a developer, where he explains this very large story where Zoe Quinn, his ex-girlfriend and indie game developer, and he said that she cheated on him with a writer by the name of Nathan Grayson. And this group believed that it was because she traded sex for positive coverage. And then an even smaller group from tier two jumped into tier three. These people started slut shaming, some of them going as far to threaten rape and murder. And then a bunch of sites started writing about Gamergate and some of those sites decided to attack gamers in general. One article from Gama Sutra, which said games culture is a petri dish of people who know so little about how human social interaction and professional life works that they can concoct online wars about social justice or game journalism ethics straight face and cause genuine human consequences because of video games. Some sites going as far to say most gamers are just white males who hate women. So we started on corruption, it came here, and then it split off into women are terrible, gamers are terrible. And then everyone's angry at everyone. Who's oh man, this is a video I've not been looking forward to making. But I got a couple questions for you guys I wanted to prepare today. My first question is, do you play video games? Majority of you are going to answer yes, because most people do play video games these days. And I, I'm including you, by the way, even if you only play like 2048 or Candy Crush or Angry Birds on your phone. Including if you only play World of Warcraft because it's trendy at your office. You, you're a gaming enthusiast. You play games. You're a gamer. Welcome to the club. That, ga that term gamer means nothing other than somebody who plays video games. And, and you're one of us. Welcome to it. I have a second question for you, though. Why do you hate women? Oh, 
That's probably pretty confusing for the majority of you. Especially because, because 45% of, of video game players these days happen to be women. Weird statistic, huh? Why do you hate people of color? Why do you hate disabled people? Why do you hate people who have a diverse sexuality? Again, most of you are pretty confused <clears throat> because a large portion of you happen to be people of color. A lot of you happen to be homosexual or transgender. A lot of you happen to be disabled. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Well, even the white cis males like me genuinely don't have very much hate in the heart for people of diversity. There are a few really angry people out there who are a vocal minority, who do some really bad things, but the majority of us just love our fellow human being. And that's particularly frustrating because right now there is a war going on, one that's kind of secret, not a lot of people are talking about. You'll see it trending a bit on Twitter, you'll see it talked about a little bit on YouTube, and now it's starting to make its appearance in gaming media. And that's what's really frustrating. Because that gaming media is beginning to brand us as woman-hating, racist, homophobic, ableist, neckbeard pieces of shit. Just because you happen to like video games. And it's killing me inside to watch this happen. very different kind. This week marks the two-month anniversary of the Gamergate movement. Depending on who you ask, Gamergate represents two very different things. Supporters say it's about a lack of ethics in video game journalism, but it's also spawned attacks on women in the games industry. Game developer Zoe Quinn told me about threats of death and sexual violence on this very program. Another developer, Brianna Wu, had to flee her home after threats. And game commentator Anita Sarkeesian canceled a speech after similar threats. So what is the real focus of Gamergate? Newsweek took a look at Gamergate tweets, analyzed them. And here's what they found. More Gamergate tweets focused on women developers than on game journalists that are supposedly the target of this debate. For example, Zoe Quinn received 10,400 hashtag Gamergate tweets since September 1st. Compare that to the 732 tweets at Nathan Grayson, the journalist accused of unethically granting her favorable reviews. So why do... There's been a lot of speculation as to what the Gamergate hashtag on Twitter was really about. Uh, it seemed to have been started by Adam Baldwin, ugh, uh, or whoever, uh, and has been seized upon by a lot of right-wingers who normally make fun of video game players, but were suddenly on their side when, when it suited them. Uh, but regardless of that, and regardless of the heaps of horrible abuse that's been attached to that hashtag, uh, I'm going to give a lot of people the benefit of a lot of doubt and say that it really was all about, um, just for the purposes of this video, say it was all about journalistic ethics, the ethics of the games media, and trying to start stem the tide of corruption in games media. Let's cut to the chase. Games journalists, for want of a better term, can be way too pally with the game industry side of things. Between the fact that a lot of critics and reporters go on to quit their jobs and become games PR reps, and the industry parties at events like E3, and the general fact that a lot of like-minded people who will naturally get along are bound to become very friendly, there's an air of chumminess between media and developers that I believe can cloud judgment and can lead to a circling of the wagons. Now, unlike some, I do not think there's a really big conspiracy going on. I I don't think the people involved are capable of it, and I don't think the people involved could shut up about it if it was happening. However, I do think games media can be very protective of the games industry because Let's it's full down. of folks they like, people are people, and also because they're often a bit starstruck by talented folks they look up to. I say that because I remember that. I remember the feeling of, oh my god, Ken Levine read my review, oh my god, this guy game made a game I like, and now we have banter. I remember that starry-eyed delight before it was all worn down by my increasing bitter now, as I said, we're all just gamers. Yes, gamers who got fucking lucky and have some talent required to maintain an audience. The us versus them adversarial mentality that's been brewing between journalists and the audience for years, not just recently, has been a bit ludicrous, and I've been part of it before, I'll admit that. It's quick to write off gamers as hysterical sometimes, it's easy to do that sometimes, to focus on Dante having black hair in DMC, and not field more legitimate complaints about frame rate and other things that Devil May Cry fans might have. I'm guilty on that count. Likewise, though, there is a lot of hysteria among the 
the community that has a sad tendency to drown out legitimacy. Sonic's legs are too long. So on one side of the fence, we have a gaming media that can be overly dismissive of its audience, and an audience with enough people in it being crazy to make that dismissal way too easy. Which brings me to a point that is, no matter how much you may hate it, unavoidable in the current climate. Everything I've said so far is aimed at rational and good folks who genuinely do just want to see a better standard of game reporting. But be aware that the amount of harassment and abuse that circled this debate is absolutely contemptible and has only served to totally undermine and discredit the notion that this is all about ethics. When good writers, freelancers who are totally outside the PR spin and hobnobbery of most traditional media are driven out of the industry, we all fucking lose. Jen Frank, who willingly disclosed her potential bias Matty Bryce, who was never afraid to tell other games media people that they were fucking bullshit. Driving unique voices out of this industry is the opposite of what gamers ought to be doing. And the fact that so many of them have been women is not a good fucking sign at all. And if you're part of the Gamergate movement and you genuinely care about ethics and inclusivity and other, other decent issues, you should be condemning the venom that's co-opting your cause rather than cling to a not all gamers argument. I realise this video inadequately discusses all the hundreds of of things going on with Gamergate. There's more I want to say, but I get 10 minutes every Monday and I'm so I speak for all gamers when I say the media should stop talking to critics like Anita Sarkeesian. Here now to be talked to is media critic and creator of the web series Feminist Frequency, Anita Sarkeesian. Ms. Sarkeesian, thanks so much for being on here. All right. Look. Let's put this on the line. Okay, let, 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 let's call this what it is. You and the other feminazis in the gamer world are coming for our balls to snip them off, put them into a little felt purse, and take them away so we have to play your nonviolent games, right? No, that's not true. It's a culture war. It's a subculture war. There is something going on, and what it is is women being harassed and threatened and terrorized for... After you first attacked male gamers for enjoying looking at big-breasted women with tiny armor that barely covers their nipples. <laughs> what is wrong with that? I like what that looks like. I'm well, a man, baby. Why do you think that women are being threatened? Because it's almost entirely women who are being threatened in Gamergate. Yes. Chris Cloe is has talked about this. He hasn't been threatened. Other men haven't been threatened. Why do you think women are being threatened in this exchange? I think women are perceived as threatening because we are asking for games to be more inclusive. Um, we're asking for games to acknowledge that we exist and that we love games. Why not just have a separate game? Have separate but equal games. <laughs> well, we do have lots of different kinds of games. And so that, what are you complaining and about? And that's one of the things that I think is happening here is that we have this wide range of, of games that um, we're seeing mobile games, we're seeing indie games, we're seeing this influx of different kinds right. of games. And that's what Gamergate is responding to. They're actually responding to the fact that we're saying gaming can no longer be this little boys club anymore. That there are many of us who have been playing games our whole, many of us women who have been playing our games our whole lives. And so they're, they're, lashing out because we're challenging the status quo of gaming as a male-dominated space. Well, okay, can't they have their own... What about the accusations of collusion between designers, feminists, and journalists? Do you understand how important it is? We are talking about ethics in gamer journalism. Do you understand how huge that is? Um, I mean, what, what if there was no ethics in Hollywood journalism? What would, what would, if we can't trust Entertainment Tonight or TMZ, where would we be? Is that what you want for gamer journalism? I think that um, that is a sort of compelling uh, way to reframe the fact that this is actually a tax on women. Like, game ethics and journalism is not what's happening in any way. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually men going after women in really hostile, aggressive ways. Mm -hmm. That's what Gamergate is about. It's about, mm -hmm. like... Ter like terrorizing women for being involved in this industry, for being involved in this hobby. It is a little bit off subject, but I ask something. As a man, am I allowed to be a feminist? Do you believe that women should have equal rights to men and sure. that we should fight for those rights? Sure. Great, then you're a feminist. <laughs>
people are still out of their fucking minds. This past week, YouTuber John Tron and developer Tim Schafer got into a bit of a dust-up over female representation in games, leading to the former's fans starting up a hashtag, I stand with John Tron. I thought that was funny. I'm He's anti-Gamergate? He's pro-Gamergate? Maybe he just doesn't know what it is, doesn't give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he got into an argument with the developer, he's not Rosa fucking Parks. Anyway, I had fun with the idea and did a silly tag of my own. I stand with Ganondorf, because if anyone needs our support, it's him. As a result, I got called an SJW, fighting on the SJW side. Mm -hmm. Social justice warrior is a term that may at one point have been meant to insult radical individuals, but it's become so abused and exploited, it doesn't really get to mean much anymore. It's become a catch-all term for person I disagree with. I've been called an SJW quite a bit lately because I've argued that it's a good idea, business-wise as well as socially, for games to be more inclusive men, and I think diversity is absolutely brilliant for games from a business, creative, and just generally nice perspective. Most importantly, it's not a zero-sum game, as I've said before. The existence of more people in gaming does not mean less games to go around, especially in an industry where the ultimate fate of the medium is decided not by you, not by me, but in a boardroom somewhere, far, far away from all this shit. Now here are my allegedly warlike beliefs, and if they're too extreme for you, then... Bye. Bye bye. Video games are big enough for us all. Harassment is shitty. Making everyone feel welcome is a nice thing to do. If that makes me a social justice warrior and therefore apparently a bad person, then, well. You know, I may not actually have the words for you. If they are internet pop culture cartoon characters, because they're not. This past week, people are just drawing lines in the sand, and if you don't go over to one side yourself, the sorting hat of the internet's gonna put you in some camp regardless. Fine. I've already told you what I think. Go sort me into whatever camp you want, and if you don't want to uh, uh, watch my show anymore as a result of that, bye, I'll see you later. Uh, the rest of you continue thanking God for me. I think that's really the only ideal, the only thing we should all stand behind is thanking God for me. And now I'm going to actually probably spend some of my day playing video games today. Uh, actually having fun and, and remembering why uh, any of us are supposedly here. Hey guys, it's me again, Boogie. Uh, you know, you may know me for my body of work here on YouTube. You may know me for my gross body. Uh, you may know me from uh, some misconceptions that have been spread about me, that I'm some sort of figurehead of Gamergate, which it could not be further from the truth. You might also know me as some sort of um, uh, turncoat against Gamergate, because I've also defended women in some of the periodicals that are out there, some of the journalists that are out there. And that's also not true. Uh, the truth is uh, clear... I actually am kind of in the middle because I have wants and needs. Um, and my morals are kind of spread out all over this thing. I want journalistic integrity. I want consumer advocacy. I want the industry to, to, to treat the consumer right. Well, at the same time, I want the industry to be integral, and I want it to be good. Resolution, simply asking gamer gators to stop is not the way to do it. Resolution is a two-way street. It will require concessions on both sides of this thing. And in order to understand that, you'll need to understand a little bit about history as I understand it. I could be mistaken. But for the largest time, gaming has been a boys club. Boys making games and boys playing the games. In the last few years, this has changed for the better. Women have decided that they want to be involved, and I'm so glad that they are. But this has been very difficult because a lot of gamers have marginalized them. And that's true. I know you may not like it, but it's true. And when these women were marginalized, many of them lashed back. They denounced gamers as a whole for being misogynistic and shitty. And in doing so, gamers felt marginalized. Now, I'm not comparing the oppression or the difficulties of being a woman to the difficulties of being a gamer. Certainly, those are really drowned out. This is the common ground we have. The common ground we have is gaming. It's the industry we love. It's setting back and playing games and enjoying them with another person, no matter what gender or color or sexuality or shape or wherever they're from or whatever they are. 
just enjoying the hobby together. I would love to see a return to that. You have no chance. Imperials. I have to destroy that thing. Good. Oh.